This is my very rough Porsche 911. It's a 996 with, it's got a broken engine, it doesn't run. Took the cylinder head off and we found broken piston rings and score cylinder. So we had a new cylinder put in, thought that would fix it. But as you're about to find out, oh, things got much worse. Well, I've got to start by uh, taking the, the crank carrier out in order to put the new cylinder half back on because we've got to take the crank carrier out, we've got to take the pistons off and we've got to build it in a specific way according to Porsche because you've got to build some of this through the side of the engine and put the pistons in after the rods are on. Okay, so I'm going to get the carrier out with my crane and put it onto my homemade engine trolley and uh, from that point we can start to unbolt the con rods. Okay, so I'm going to start with bank one and these were really, really tight and took some effort to get off of these did. Okay, so now I'm going to have a look at the shelves. They look really good actually. So there is the IMS bearing coming out of that IMS shaft. That is not a camshaft bearing. That is the IMS bearing. That should not be that colour. And this is when things started to look pretty bad. As you can see, the bearing shelf and that comrade has got very hot and left some of itself on the crankshaft journal. My options are buy a new crankshaft, far too expensive. Like the 997, I could send the crankshaft off to be reground, re nitrided to get oversized shells. Cost about 600 quid, but I doubt very much the place that I sued, who are known the people I know could do it, will take another crankshaft from me. Okay, so, well, the even though the shells look really bad, um, they weren't welded to the crank. But you can see the crank had picked up a little bit so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try and polish it so i've already given it a couple of goes and then i wrap some 1200 around it get a shoe lace uh well actually it's a, a bit of cloth round it and a bit of back and forth keep it round and just take off as little as i can because these cranks have only got three or four thou of thickness before you go through to the soft metal um, and then it's it's that's it. It's no good. It needs to be nitrided and ground. But uh, let's see how much how we can get away. We see if we can get a nice polished finish. We've taken off as little as we can and stay within that hardness. I don't need to do too much. That looks really good. So we're going to check the clearance with some plastic gauge. Take a piece of plastic gauge, touch of oil. Right, that's stuck to the journal. Right, we're going to bolt a good rod on with a good shell in. Okay, we're going to torque this good rod up with the new shells in and so we can see how much clearance we've got on that crank. This is where we find out has this works or is the crank scrap? Oh, 20 newton meters. Okay, we've talked it up, we've removed it. This is where we use the plastic gauge and we measure how much it's squashed and we'll know how much clearance we've got. That's a reading we've got. 0.050 which is from my calculations I've just done um, 0.00197 of an inch which is well with intolerance for a 53 mil journal okay we should check one of the good journals that we've not touched just to check what the tolerance is like uh, you can see it on there that bit of plastic gauge Let's see from the top better maybe Right, we're gonna see what a stamp, an untouched journal is like. Okay, so 
so we can see how much we spread out there. That's 0.015 fair of an inch. That's within sort of the tolerance limit set by Mayhow. Um, we make on most of these components. This, I believe, is my new comrade. Well, new to me comrade. Um, to replace the one that got very, very hot. Oh, look at that difference in colour. Okay, so we're going to get these new rods in new shells with assembly lube. Let's get it built. Okay, so when we finish this, what we're going to do is lift this whole crank carrier into the new case half. Okay, so there's the case half with the new cylinders in there. Two new cylinders, the centre one, but fairly new as it was, so that whole side has been replaced. Uh, I'm going to do this very carefully, very slowly, don't want to damage anything. <laughs> I did forget one of the joints, so I have to do this again. Uh, you're supposed to use Porsche Tour 9613 in order to hold the case, uh, hold the crank carrier to the case. I haven't got that all, so I'm going to print one off. Now, I've got to tip this up carefully, so the cage doesn't drop out. And put some secure, secure and screws in. So, there's my tool 9613, Porsche 9613 tool. There we go. One at this corner. And this will hold that carrier in place. Because we will be lowering it onto the engine. Onto the other case, sorry. There's a box with the, uh, the new rings in. Right, so this is the cylinder which is having the, which has got the new rings on the piston. So what we need to do is gap these to make sure that with expansion and the heat they'll fit nicely. Right, so that is that's not point four five mil which is spot on. Okay now that gap is far too far too close I'm gonna have to file some of that down. Yeah, that's that's good. That's not point two. Okay, let's fit these rings onto the piston and get this piston into the cylinders. As you can see from there, I've removed these pistons from them rods because they'll go in afterwards through the side of the engine. So that's the clip that's come out of there. Pull the pin out and the piston comes off. Um, so I've already done that. I've numbered the pistons so we know which way they go back in. Okay, so I'm going to remove the tools and the bolts. Very carefully hold the crank in there. There's one bolt holding it in. and Because uh, now we're going to put the other half of the cylinders on top. 
we're going to seal, I've cleaned all the, the flange up, we're going to seal this. Now you need to do a really thin bead here, really thin, because you don't want it squeezing out. You don't want it going into the old, into the, the, the waterways, tailing ways. It doesn't take a lot. Too many people put massive beads on, you just don't need that much. release on. I've got about 25 bolts for the to hold it. And now I need to torque them all up to I think 10 foot pound. Okay, so we've got the updated IMS cover. That's the that's an original 996 one. Now this had already had this on. This is what the, the original looked like. And these are what the new ones look like. New seal. Now, what I say a lot of on forums and on chicken that and people not being able to get these centered so they can put the cap on. Well, what you have to do is make sure that your tensioners aren't done up and then you can get your cap on and then do your tensioners up. Okay, let's get some thread lock on these bolts and tighten them up. Now we'll tighten them up, I think it was £10 per foot. Okay, so we're going to do this bolt because this is how we put the pistons in and our rods go through this hole to attach the pistons to the con rods. Okay this was really tight and I needed to get an extension bar onto my ratchet in order to undo this. see me moving the comb rods in the cylinders through that hole. Okay, so what we did, we turn the engine upside down so these rods hang down in central. Uh, then we put this white tool through and then we can line up. As you can see, it goes in and it lines it up and makes sure that we can push the other tool with the wrist pin on all the way through and into the piston once we push the piston on. Now that tool wasn't quite the right size, it's uh, previously been sanded down so because I used it with my 997 but yeah I, I used the same technique as I did for the, for the, for the French F journal I just you know, took it down by about half a mil of it and went into the end um, little end very nicely Okay so a quick look at how this piston comes apart we take the clip out, push the wrist pin out and it'll go back together the same way Okay, so we've set it to U6 for piston 6. The engine's pointed with that downwards, so the, the rod's in the right place for us to get this tool in. That's got it all the way in, that's lined up. The pistons we can push up, and now that we add the, uh, the wrist pin on the tool, we can slide that through, get it into the piston, and then that'll be attached. We just need to get the clip in at that point. Okay, this is how I load the circle. Put it in at an angle, 
with the tab in the, the, the slot, push it round, then pop it onto the tool, put a wrist pin on top and push down and that will line it up. Just like, well, just like that. There we go. That is in nice and square. Okay, so let's put this clip in. Now, if this goes wrong, if it doesn't see properly or it pings out, then it could go into the engine. If it doesn't see properly, you've got to get it out somehow. A lot of the time, we've got to take the engine to bits again to get these out and start all over. We do not want to do that, so let's hope this goes well. It didn't go in. It's bent, you can see it just there. It didn't seat in. Um, now I've got to get it out, which, well, I got it out and it took me a considerable amount of time with magnets and bent bits of wire to pull it. But yeah, I got it, it didn't drop in the engine, so fortunately I can try again. Obviously we have a new clip, which this is. And you can see we've got it, like the tool with the clip in lined up nicely. And as you can see, that one's gone in perfectly. Crisis averted. Let's hope the other two go in perfectly as well. Okay, so our pins in U5. We've got a lining up tool in, so we're going to pull that out and we're going to put some assembly lube on the gudgeon pin, wrist pin, and we can get that in through the piston, through the little comrade end and secure that piston in place ready for the clip. Okay, let's turn it back over so we can put the clip in through the top and see what we're doing. Okay, so you can see our wrist pin is in place. So let's put the, uh, the tool in with the clipping. We can see that's mounted. That's lined up with the notch in the piston. So I think we're, uh, we're ready to go and tap that in. And there we go, the clip's in. It's in the notch correctly, it's seated well. Good, we can move on. Okay, so we're going to set it up for the last piston, which is U4 on the, uh, the wheel. And then we can line it up, put the gudgeon pin in, and get the clip in it. As with the others, I'm going to oil up the, uh, the cylinder, oil up the piston. Uh, tap it in, get ready to put that pin in. Okay, so one last time, we've turned the engine the other way around, so we can, uh, got the pistons pointing down, we've pushed that pin in, secured the piston, and we're ready to go in with the clip. Okay, so the last uh, clip's in the tool, uh, we've got it lined up with the notch in the piston so we're ready to tap that in and secure it yes that's the last clip in we're going to put the plug in the install hole and then we can move on okay so we're going to get the engine together and get it in the car uh, i've got to get the cylinder heads on i've got a little bit of time so if you haven't give me a like give me a subscribe because we'll try and get these videos out in a few weeks this time. Um, so till then, 